friends, I hope everyone's doing okay. I hope you're all being safe. I wanted to make a video just so for those of you who are doing the work and want to do the work, this will help you out. So I'm kind of use this to guide you along. And so first and foremost, um, this is going to be a reading video. And I'm going to open up by saying one thing I love to do. And that is, or at least something I used to do a lot, is play video games. So, as you know, I relate to reading a lot to video games. Not just hear me out. I know some of you are going, Mr. Keezy, not hear me out. One of my favorite games all time was Mario Kart. Now, I don't know if some of you know what Mario Kart is. There's one track called the Rainbow Track. So, if you haven't played Mario Kart, what it is is all the characters from Mario, you drive these little cars and you race each other. Now, all the um, different tracks they had were all difficult in their own ways, but one was the rainbow track. Now the trick of the rainbow track, when I first played it, I'd always fall off, I'd slide off, I'd go into infinite space, I'd always get hit by the shells and the stars, and they have like a little ghost that pop up and every now and then. One thing I realized when I played it was, some sections you got to jump off of bridges at a certain length, some sections you wouldn't take, but then I realized at the very end you had to stay in the middle. You couldn't go left, you couldn't right. If you didn't stay in the middle, you often would end up in last. That's something I had to realize through trial and error. The reason I bring that up is today I'm going to show you a strategy. We are doing a lot of difficult texts. This strategy is going to kind of guide you in the right way. I'm going to show you a strategy just like in the Mario track where I had to stay in the middle. It's the same thing. I'm using a strategy to make it easier for you. Just like when I steered in the middle to um, make it easier for me for Mario, I'm going to make it easier for you in your reading to find a strategy that really, really helps out. Today, we're going to focus on these things called pop-out sentences. Okay? And what pop-out sentences are going to do is help you summarize your reading. And then I'm also going to help you guide your reading to what is a little more fifth grade, okay? So I'm going to show you pop-out sentences today. All right, readers, get your handy-dandy notebooks out. Get a book out. If you don't have a book, you can use internet, epic books, wherever you can find something to read. Get a non-fiction book if you can. Um, find somewhere, uh, somewhere quiet if you can, too, and we're going to try this strategy together. So let's do this. Alright readers, so we are going to read a book called When Lunch Fights Back, um, Wickedly Clever Animal Defenses. Um, this is a book I use often to show you. Um, one is because it is about 5th, 6th grade text, and another reason I like it is because it's super cool. I love to see all these cool animals. And this will kind of show you going up in complex text. So this is written by Rebecca L. Johnson. So I'm just going to go to a chapter I've been kind of on. Let's see if I can find it. And so the chapter is on this really cool like lizard that I don't know much about. And I know a lot of you love lizards. And it's chapter 5. So what I'm going to do first is just read through it. And then I'm going to show you how to just do this strategy called pop-out sentences. So here's blood in your eye. It says right here, it shows this cool little lizard. It says, spots, stripes, and earth tone colors help horn lizards blend into dry, rocky ground. Here, let me zoom this in for you a little bit so you can see a little better. Cool. So, and then right here, it has a little box caption on the side. So it gives a scientific name where it is. Looks like it's in Texas, New Mexico, and Oklahoma, Kansas, Colorado, and Northern Mexico. Habitat, dry, scrubby grasslands. Size 2.5 to 4.5 inches. Okay, cool. And it's not including the tail. So let's start off. A horned lizard basks beneath the hot Texas sun. It rests in a dry gully, digesting a belly full of ants. The only sounds are the rustle of wind through the grass and a distant hawk's cry. But the lizard feels something. A slight tremor runs through the ground. Something is coming. Something big enough to be a threat. The lizard sees a coyote as it crests the hill and trots into the gully. Like a balloon deflating, the lizard flattens itself against the ground. The knobs on its head, the, sorry, the knobs and spines on its scaly skin blend with the rocks that surround it. The horns on its head even cast small shadows, breaking up the lizard's outline. It's perfect camouflage. Alright, so right away I know it's talking about horned lizards, but I want to find the pop-out sentences. You might be asking, what the heck is a pop-out sentence? Well, here's what a pop-out sentence is. In my notes I call finding pop-out sentences. Now if you want to pause this and write this down, that's totally fine. 
So to find the pop-out sentences, it's kind of like a sentence that really, really, really comes to mind. Now, sometimes it's easy to find them, sometimes it's kind of hard, and they're a little hidden. So it, you have to ask yourself what this section is all about. So you have to find what the section is all about. That's what the sentence is. It is usually at the start of the paragraph, usually. Sometimes, though, it could be in the middle, sometimes it could be in the end, especially if you're reading complex text. So let's see if we can find this pop-out sentence, okay? So let me go back to those two, or that page I just read. So when I read this, it kind of gave like a story about the lizard. So that's why it's kind of hard to see what it's really about. So I have this one, the horned lizard basks beneath the hot Texas sun. I might think that that is the pop-out sentences because it's bold. All right, so I'm just going to kind of keep that in the back of my head. Sometimes, though, it's the last sentence in the paragraph, something big enough to be a threat. I don't know. That sentence seems important because it's talking about it's being scared, but I don't know if that's the whole gist of this whole page. Okay, let's look at this sentence right here. The lizard sees a coyote as it crests the hill and trots down in the gully. Hmm, maybe. Okay, but let's look at the last sentence here. It's perfect camouflage. The horns on his head even cast small shadows, breaking up the lizard's outline. So here's what I got. I got a horned lizard. That could be a pop-out sentence. I always like to go maybe at the end. Something big enough to threat. So talking about threat, I don't know about that. It doesn't seem like it's the most important part, but... Right here, I got this sentence. The lizard sees a coyote as a crest to a hill and trots down in the gully. Maybe. Because it's talking about seeing a threat. And then the horns on its head even cast small shadows break into the lizard's outline. It's perfect camouflage. So my vote would be either the horned lizard basks beneath the hot Texas sun because it's talking about the horned lizard, or the camouflage. Since this is the very first paragraph, my vote... Remember, the, the, everyone can have a different thought is this horned lizard bass beneath the hot sun. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm either going to pull out a post-it, or I'm going to get my notebook out. And I'm going to write that pop-out sentence out. So let me write it out. A horned See I wrote pop sentence? And so, and then I'm even going to put my page number in there. I'm going to put page 32. Okay. A horned lizard. Can't see it, but I'm writing on all my post-it. Backs beneath the hot Texas sun. Alright, so I got my one pop out sentence there, I wrote it down. Alright, that's good. Now, here's your turn. I'm going to do this for each page. <coughs> so, sorry for my cough. I'm going to go on page 32, I'm going to write page 32 down. Or sorry, page 33. Let me write page 33. I'm going to put a little star so I know that it's this pop out sentence. Remember, pop-out sentence is what you think the page is really about. Now, you could do it by paragraph or you could do it by page. Let me do it by page. Let me read through it and see if you can find the pop-out sentence. Remember, everyone's pop-out sentence could be a little different as long as you give good reasons why you think it's a pop-out sentence, why that sentence shows what the whole page is about. Okay. But perfect camouflage is not enough. The coyote has keen eyesight keen eyesight and a superb sense of smell. It catches the lizard's scent and stalks over to investigate, knowing it's been discovered. The lizard tries to look big and fierce. It spreads out its spine rimmed back to make its body seem wider. It brandishes the horns on its head, but the coyote isn't put, put off. Snarling, it bares its teeth to bite. The horned lizard resorts to its secret weapon. It tenses its muscles and arches its back. It closes its eyes as its eyelids seem to swell. Suddenly, a thin stream of blood shoots out of lizard's right eye. Ooh, nasty. It rockets through the air like a jet of water fired from a squirt gun. The blood hits the coyote right in the mouth. 
The coyote makes a fierce or makes a face and shakes its head, trying to get rid of the blood. The lizard sees its chance to escape. It darts to, over to a low rock ledge and squeezes beneath it, beyond the reach of the coyote's teeth and claws. All right, right now, this is what I want you to do, readers. Pause the video and see what you think the pop-out sentence is. I'll kind of move this out a little so you can see it. Oops, wrong way. What do you think the pop-out sentence is? Try your best. Remember, there's really no right or wrong as long as you give a good reason for it. All right. If you unpaused it, let's look. So, perfect camouflage is not enough. You can use that. Knowing it's been discovered, the lizard tries to look big and fierce. That could be one, definitely. The horned lizard resorts to secret weapon. Ooh, that could definitely be one because it's talking about secret weapons. What about the last sentence? It darts over to a rock ledge, squeezes beneath it, and beyond the reach of the coyote's teeth and claws. I think a lot of these would work as long as you show a sentence that kind of explains its secret weapon. All right. I think, for me, what I'm going to do for my pop-out sentence is write... The horned lizard resorts to its secret weapon. I'm actually going to add another sentence. I know, I know, I said pop-out sentence, but I'm going to put two just so people know. With the horned lizard resorts to its secret weapon, it tenses its muscles and arches its back. It closes its eyelids as it seems to swell. I might put that in there just so people can get a detail of what the horned lizard is doing exactly. So I'm going to put the horned lizard... Resorts to its secret weapon. And if you wanted to stop there, you can, but I'm going to put the second sentence in there just because it gives more detail. It tenses its muscle. Archets its back. Okay, notice how I put the page number. I put my pop-out sentence or sentences. And I do a freeze page. So readers, what you can do today is use a strategy to help you out with your own personal reading. Remember, you don't need to copy a whole entire paragraph. Just give me one sentence that you think summarizes that page. Go through at least, like... You don't have to do this for 10 pages or anything, but maybe do this for like 4 or 5 pages. Alright, so as you read, get, try this out. This will really, really, really help you all understand what you're reading. Because I know some of your reading is really complicated, just like this. And so, you can use these pop-out sentences to really ask yourself, why does this sentence show what this whole page is really about? Because once you say that, readers, you're going to really understand what you're reading. All right, have fun with your reading today. Remember, be safe. Try your best of this. Remember, this is optional. And remember to write down your page numbers, and you can put this on Google Classroom under the date for today. All right, take care, everybody. Bye.